Yes, my name is Bench and welcome back to Star Made. In this episode, we're checking out the basics of this one here, the randomizer block. It's one of the brand new blocks that's been introduced, has a cool bunch of uh, functionality to it. So let's check out exactly how it works and how we can use it. So we'll fly over here and we've got a little test area set up here. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, we've got an activation module and a button. We've got our randomizer block and we've got a light because it's easy to see when things are active. So we'll select our randomizer block and put it into the light. So you can see here it's uh, when it's on, it lights up the light and when it's off, it doesn't light up the light. Now we'll take a activation module and we'll connect it into our randomizer block and we'll take a button and put it into our randomizer block as well. So here's our basic demonstration. Um, if uh, we have activation modules and buttons and they both send out different states. So if we toggle the activation module on, it's sending out an on state. If we toggle it off, it's sending out an off state. The button as well, when we toggle it up and down, it sends out an on state and then also sends out an off state. If you want to go more in depth with what those particular buttons do, uh, and how the states work, you can check out my masterclass series. It goes into a little bit more regarding that. Now the randomizer block is looking for changes in states and whenever it gets a change of state, it has a 50% cha chance to change its own state. So you can see it's off here. If I toggle it like so, you can see it's center state, but it hasn't changed. If I toggle it off, same again, toggle it on, toggle it off, you can see, so it took us a couple turns for the randomizer block to go on. If I toggle it off and on again, same go. It's taking quite a while, and there we go. You can see it's changed there. Now the button sends out two states, one for when it goes on and one that goes for off. So in theory, we have better odds every time that we push the button for it to go on. But you'll see there, as it happens, there's times where it could possibly go on and then immediately go off. So the randomizer block has a 50% chance to change its state. Now that's all well and good if you want random stuff, but what if you want more random stuff? It's easier to demonstrate if we grab a lot of these and have our button go into all of them, our activation module go into all of them, and you can see how random this is. Now we'll grab each one and we'll give them a button, because uh, a light, sorry like so. And you'll see. So you can see there's about a 50% chance demonstrated quite clearly there where every second one <laughs> seemed to toggle on and every second one didn't. So you can see there toggling all the different options that kind of seem to happen. You can see with a button, it'll be even more obvious just how random it can be every time I toggle. Now, if we set a clock up to this, you'd be able to toggle through it, and it gives you a lot more random possibilities. But you'll be thinking, all right, well, this is all well and good, but what if I want to, say, increase the odds of it working or decrease the odds of me getting the particular random number that I want? Well, there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. If we use an OR gate, then we take the signals, and if any one of them goes on, then this will go on, which for us is pretty predictable. So we'll do three, because that seems um, pretty fair, and we can do three on the other one, like so. And this time we'll use an AND gate. Now the AND gate is looking for all three to be active. So the OR gate, using an OR gate in this configuration, means that Rather than it being 50, 50, 50, we have a, a much higher chance for this to go on. And in this case, this one, instead of it being 50, 50, 50, it's quite a low chance for this one to go on. So what we can do is cover the face with a button so you can see when they go off, like so. And now we can start toggling. And you can see this one's already gone on because one is on. And you can see in the second turn, we get all of them on, and so our AND is on. 
but you can see toggling through it's very rare that this one on the left goes um, off but it's also just as rare that the one on the right goes on if we hit the button here you can see we can speed that up and you can see it's very rare that there's the one on the side goes off now this has a number of different applications um, there's different logic circuits that benefit from the ability to send out random binary numbers or uh, random numbers or random signals um, otherwise if in the very basic setup you can use this to do random light sequences to make uh, different sections um, feel either uh, more um, computerized like it's driven by cyborgs or robots if you wanted to um, Otherwise, you could use this if you wanted to make your hull or uh, station just feel a lot creepier. You could have flickering lights a lot easier um, in this situation, and you could see they're kind of flickering on and off. And if you had um, buttons connected to all these, they'd really blink. And that would be as simple as swapping this and putting a button in between each of these, like so, and connecting that up. And we'll run a, uh, a simple clock into this. Not the best way of doing a clock, but it'll do. So you can see they're kind of flickering through like so. So there's all kinds of manner of uh, things that you can do with these circuits. But that's it for me on randomizer signals. No doubt you'll see them worked into more builds later on uh, in different tutorials and different showcase videos, other logic stuff. But that's the basics of the randomizer block. If you want to check out details on the other block, the sensor block, which is this one over here, a nice pretty one that's glowing here, then check out the other video that's just popped up and you can click on that one and check it out. Otherwise, until next time, my name is Bench and thanks for watching.